naming and shaming, tax returns and national insurance. All this on today's business tax news. So another week's gone by in the world of tax and we're here to give you a little update on all the things that matter to you as a small business owner. In this particular week there's a couple of things to talk about starting with tax returns. So you'd think I'd be fed up of talking about tax returns after the amount of times I've mentioned them in these videos, but sadly not. Um, we are still in the window where people haven't done them. HMRC had published the figures and it shows that nearly a million taxpayers haven't actually filed their tax return. That's about 8%. You instantly get a £100 penalty for not doing that and it ramps up really, really quickly up to about £1,600 if you don't um, file it. And there's not a lot of excuse that you're going to get away with with getting off of those penalties. You have to have something pretty drastic in your life going on to be able to not uh, have a penalty years ago. If you didn't owe any tax, they would remove it, but these days not, sadly. So definitely get that done. Don't hang around. There's plenty of people out there and there's a lot of help out there. You know, if you're really struggling and you're on low income or, uh, for example, there are tax charities that can help you out in certain circumstances. Otherwise, see if you can find a friend or an accountant to give you a hand with that. So yeah, that's, that's it on tax returns. That's all I'm going to mention on there. So a lot of the other news this week was more interesting. The first one being that we are really approaching the budgets. The budget's coming out on the 11th of March, and that normally is quite an exciting time for us accountants. It's been an odd few years because we haven't really had much news. I know I spoke about in a previous video some rumoured changes to entrepreneurs' relief, which might affect a few people. But one thing that undoubtedly affect everybody that's coming up, whether you're employed, self-employed, director of a limited company, is the national insurance thresholds for the new tax year have just been published, uh, causing all the payroll providers to get into a frenzy to get them in time and out to everybody so we can start process in payrolls but effectively what they've done is they had a manifesto pledge to bring the national insurance threshold so the limit you can earn before paying national insurance up to £9,500. Um, they're going to do that but they're only doing it for employees so us as employers as business owners who employ a team uh, you actually have pay national insurance at a lower level than the employee um, not really a massive deal, just really, really odd, and in a tax planning world can cause some issues. So just something to something to consider, I suppose, when you're planning, uh, especially when you're an accountant. If you've got an accountant, they'll be doing that for you, but if you're doing that yourself, just be aware now there are two different levels. However, overall, it's really good news because as an employee, or even as a director of a limited company, depending on what you're doing with your own salary, you're gonna be better off because the national insurance threshold's been raised and they haven't changed the percentages that we pay. And also, even as an employer, although the bandings have changed uh, of when we start paying these national insurance, they've actually still gone up. So you can currently pay nine and a half grand, which is equal to 183 pound a week, um, currently on national insurance, before paying national insurance. And then uh, the business itself starts paying national insurance when the employees are earning over 169 a week. So it's a little bit lower, um, but just a uh, small, small difference, but still overall good news. On the not so good news front, HMRC have come back and uh, it's out in various different papers, pretty much every website imaginable actually over the last couple of days. And that's talking about the name and shame policy that HMRC are talking about for employers that don't pay the minimum wage. Now that sounds fair enough, doesn't it really? Don't pay the minimum wage, get named and shamed. But they've been doing this actually intermittently on and off for years. And I've seen a very small employer end up on there before. Um, hairdressers was a prime example at one point because apprenticeships is where a lot of people get caught out. So as we're moving towards April, it's a really good time now to review your arrangements because sometimes you get caught out by not necessarily paying under the minimum wage but just not structuring your hours and setup right so that when they worked it backwards they were under the minimum wage so that should really be reviewed because we've got some raises both to the minimum wage and to the national living wage coming in April and it's a really good time to just look at your arrangements make sure that's okay and also make sure that you're compliant as we come the other side of April. And the name and shame bit really is to regards what they did, they literally went, if they found you out and investigated you and there was tax to pay, you ended up on that list that they publish on their website. So obviously would be a reputational concern. Um, I'd seen it locally where the particular employer made the papers for this reason, because it's all big news for, for all of 10 minutes, but still you don't want to end up in there. So make sure that you're doing what you should be doing and paying everybody at least the minimum. Review it now, get it right, and uh, let's not make any mistakes that we'll be uh, regretting at a later date. So that's it for the news this week. Short and sweet, three little points to keep you going. We'll see you on the next one.